1999. It was a day that tested us like never before. It tested our accuracy and experience, our endurance and courage, and showed us as Oklahomans how we can all stick together through the worst of times. In the next few minutes, we'll take you behind the scenes from the very first warnings issued here in the Fort Warren Storm Center to live pictures from Chopper 4 on that incredible day. We'll also take you on a wild and unpredictable ride inside the cars from our forewarned storm trackers. Things started heating up just after 4 p.m. that day when severe weather developed down near Lawton. Our storm trackers were already on the scene, ready to track the storm towards central Oklahoma. Before long, they had their hands full. And the movement is toward the north-northeast at 40 miles per hour into southern Caddo County. So we're going to track that very carefully toward Elgin, Sterling, Fletcher, and Surreal for you folks in southwestern Oklahoma. Now we have live in Chopper 4, southwest of the metro, Jim Gardner, and he is near Chickasha closing rapidly on that area of severe weather. And once again, for you folks in central, western, and southwestern Oklahoma, the risk of severe weather is there, including the possibility of developing tornadoes. So the forewarned storm team, including our ground trackers, are fanned out across the entire state, and we're tracking it very carefully. Here's our first video from unit number four. This is located near Lawton, and already some uh, nickel to quarter size hail northwest of town. And they're also tracking very carefully from our uh, first video feed uh, from Steve Carano, also more severe weather developing in the Lawton area. These thunderstorms, Linda, are developing very quickly, and the likelihood is there for severe storms uh, even to move toward the metro in the next two to three hours. We'll keep a uh, very close track on it. Now back to you. By 517, the first tornado set down near the Surreal area in southwest Oklahoma. This is part of the same complex that held together, cycled through, strengthened, and made its way into the metro area. We had visuals on the air for people to see the tornado, courtesy of Jim Gardner, the Chopper 4 pilot, and our forewarned storm trackers were on the ground, giving people a close look at what this storm looked like. By this time, we had the storm completely surrounded, both in the ground and in the air. Let's go back down to southwestern Oklahoma, near Surreal, as it tracks up I-44. There it is, there it is. Live tornado on the ground from Chopper 4, and there is the tornado on the ground. Uh, from our ground unit, Steve Carano is on the Gittner. Steve? Mike, I've got the tornado on the ground. I've got good debris, but I can still see the tornado on the ground. Uh, still have the debris on the ground and a uh, good rotation, and I'm trying to get out ahead of it where we can talk about it a little bit more. Oh, okay, we are okay. back with Jim Gardner. Jim, let's have a visual from your vantage point. That is obviously on the ground. Very two to the west and two to the north of Surreal. So it looks like that's north of State Highway 19 for you folks in southeastern Caddo County. And uh, Jim, let's have a commentary from your vantage point. Well, Mike, we've been watching it for the past uh, couple of minutes here. You can definitely see the debris cloud. The, te the funnel kind of went back up into the wall cloud, but this is a very, very large wall cloud. The inflow is phenomenal, but you can see the debris right there in your screen, Mike. It's still tracking. Oh. It appears to us to be north, northwest. We got a lot of lightning up in front of us, but it's still on the ground, Mike, at this time. It's definitely a large tornado now. Can you visualize yes, that, Mike? Yes, it looks like uh, the whole wall cloud is lowered. Now the tornado looks to be growing rapidly in size. Got a couple of possible touchdown sites there, it looks like. Uh, that looks to be further to the southwest. Jim, uh, are you safe at your current location? Do you feel safe? Uh, come back, Mike. Do you, do you feel safe where you're located? We want you to stay with this. We want you to be safe, though. No doubt, tremendous inflow coming Yeah, I can, I can hold this heading for a few minutes, Mike. Uh, right now, I'm flying sideways and just letting the storm kind of draw us in. And I'll shoot as long as I can before I have to reposition. I got such a strong south wind here, I can't hold the tail end of the wind and track this tornado. But we'll hold this as long as we can. Okay, Jim, for your for your tracking purposes, this is going to be northwest of Cement on Highway 8, eight miles south of Anadarko. That's in a fairly rural area, just to the east of Stecker, in southeastern Caddo County. The movement's going to take it up to near Verdon. If it turns to the right, it may go into Chickasha, but right now near Verdon. So uh, traveling uh, up Interstate 44 for your purposes ought to take you pretty much parallel uh, to that continued tornado touchdown. Now, can you see any debris? Uh, we have a, the, the vapor cloud down there on the ground. Uh, it looks like it's gone through some groves of trees as well. Have you seen any substantial debris going up in that tornado? We've seen a few power lines pop, Mike. And right now, I can tell you right now, i got emergency units on the highways at this time below us uh, headed that direction uh, in full emergency. I count three or four units on the ground headed towards that direction of the tornado. We're moving uh, just sideways, just flying sideways, Mike. You definitely see the debris cloud. It's starting to wrap up a little tighter now. Uh, it appears to be close to a water tank from what I can see. Those are incredible images. Now, that water tank, we see that's like a rural water district tank, perhaps. It, it looks like it's going to go just to the northwest of that tank. 
That's correct. That is that is some tremendous pictures. Now, this is going to be just to the northeast of Stecker and southwest of Verdon, and the presentation from the forewarn edge is just tremendous here in the office. So uh, this made tornado for quite some time, and you folks in southeastern Caddo County and west central Grady County need to really think about your safe spot as this heads on up toward Laverty and uh, the southern sides of Anadarko near Indian City and over toward Burden and uh, Chickasha, interior closet or bathroom away from windows as uh, this has now been tornadoing since about uh, 17 minutes past five. So we're going on almost 10 minutes, uh, 11 minutes now, and it continues to be uh, firmly on the ground. Can you briefly pan out? Let's can just briefly let's pan out here and get a little broader look at this whole thing. Uh, the wall cloud very, very low, very large, rapidly rotating. Uh, uh, tornado firmly in contact with the ground. Uh, Jim, pretty low up there on the right-hand side of the screen as well. That's going to be heading on up toward Vernon. Also, a couple of reports of funnels now as far southwest as southwest of Surreal. So let's go on back in tight on that tornado and take another look at it. Uh, it has turned into a large tornado, Mike. Uh, hopefully this shot will do it justice. It has gotten very large at this time. Can you, uh, can Steve Johnson go ahead and pan on, let's go ahead and zoom on down to the debris cloud. Let's take a look at the debris cloud here. Uh, Steve uh, Carano, please stay on the line. Uh, unit number three, Steve yes. Carano, stay on the line. Okay. Uh, we're, we're, we're getting reports now of funnels aloft near Anadarko. Now for you folks, uh, in Caddo County, we want to give you an exact location. This is going to be uh, just south of Indian City, uh, six miles south of Anadarko and approximately five miles north of Surreal. Uh, Jim Gardner, can you see Surreal from your vantage point where you're located? Uh, Mike, at this time, I'm, I believe it's behind me. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'm kind of in a rural area. I see a town to my north, uh, northeast of me about a mile. I don't know if that's... Uh, Right now, Mike, I haven't had time to look at my GPS to really find out what the location is. Okay. Uh, we are getting a flurry of reports of uh, some funnel clouds back on the back side of the wall cloud. For the time being, though, we're going to stay right here with this uh, tornadic activity. And uh, this is uh, making uh, sure progress toward Laverty. Uh, you folks along the railroad track south of Verdon and also Verdon and potentially Chickasha. This is pretty much making that uh, we're moving west, northwest pretty much moving west-northwest. Uh, he's in contact with our uh, electronic uh, news gathering uh, room, and we are continuing to track live for you from Chopper 4 of the tornado that's been on the ground now since 17 minutes after 5. Meanwhile, Steve Carano and photographer Thane Hudson are traveling on Highway 62, going east between Anadarko and Chickasha. They're trying to get on the back side of the storm. At the moment, though, they're being pelted with hell. We're constantly feeding the storm trackers information so they can pick up the storm back in the Chickasha area. From Chopper 4, we can see the storm has begun to weaken and dissipate only to reform and drop a tornado back down near Laverty. Meteorologist David Payne and photographer Mark Dillard have been tracking that storm, and what you're about to see is incredible. It's actually the birth of a tornado. I've got a rapid rotation almost directly above me, just to my west-northwest. And it's going to tornado at any time. It's all, tornado is imminent. Now, here comes the funnel. I have condensation cloud. My winds are picking up. And here, here come the winds, Mike. 40 going to 50. Rapid, rapid rotation. Rapid rotation, Mike. Here we go. Winds to 50 to 60 miles an hour. Rotation increasing. Here we go. Winds to 80 miles an hour, Mike. Here's this 80 miles an hour. Tornado on the ground. Tornado on the ground. Winds to 80 miles an hour. West of Liberty. Morgan, can you hear me? Yes, we, we have you live, David. Okay, this is I'm, now sorry. I'm talking so loud. The winds are really kicking up here again. There it is, Jim. Uh, there you go. Right, that's rapid rotation right there, there folks. That's uh, very dangerous. That's rapid rotation. That is a tornado on the ground. It's getting much larger. Uh, David, stay with us and stay safe. Where, where's your location right now, David? Mike, it's a big tornado. It's on the ground. It's just to my north. It's just to my west northwest. It's about, uh, uh, about an eighth of a mile. No, I'm sorry. About a, uh, that is a large tornado. It's getting very large. Big tornado on the ground. See, the rotation is just bigger. It's right above my head. It's to my north. David, I think that was one of the moments early in the afternoon, folks listening to us on the radio and watching us here on Oklahoma's News Channel 4, that they really began to get the flavor and the feel and began to know that this was not an ordinary tornado day. Not at all. That storm, of course, we got right up underneath where the rotation was. The wind really began to increase. The rotation was increasing. We're right underneath it. It's getting faster and faster and faster. The winds are blowing like crazy. And we knew that we were going to have more than likely a big, long track tornado that afternoon. 
you think you're too close? Probably not. We've always got to right up to the edge, but not to cross over that edge. And I think being close enables us to give the best warning or at least tell people exactly where that tornado is and where it's headed. And that's the bottom line. We recommend sirens to be sounded now in Chickasha. We recommend strongly sirens to be sounded in Chickasha for you folks in Chickasha. David, go ahead. Yeah, Mike, we have a, uh, again, multiple vortex now. I've seen two and three uh, separate tornadoes on the main wrapping wall of this tornado here. And again, uh, uh, I've got a west, now I've got a west wind at 60 to 80 miles an hour. The tornado's just in my north, about, uh, about an eighth of Ohio or west. We're hanging all the cars here. Okay, that is oh a God. that's a large circulation there, capable of producing a very large tornado. This is going oh to be very God. close to Laverty. Wow. Like Laverty is not seen on the storm tracker system when we're talking about that. Laverty is a very small community located south of the Verdon area, uh, just about three four miles south of the Verdon area, right on the county line. Okay, this will be crossing from. Mike, we got debris in the air, right here, Dillard. Mike, we got debris in the air. Okay, we we have you. Jim Gardner is zooming in with Steve Johnson, our photojournalist. We're looking at it here live from Chopper Ford. David, stay with us and stay safe. Now, what direction from Laverty do you believe this to be, David? What's that? What direction from Laverty, David? Oh, I'm sorry, say again. The wind's from Laverty. Yes, from Laverty. What direction? I'm from... due west of Laverty. I'm due west of Laverty. About uh, about two miles. The tornado is about an eighth of a mile to my north. Tornado's drifting to my north about an eighth of a mile. And I mean, it's wrapped up, and it's, uh, I would say the uh, damage squad would be uh, maybe an eighth of a mile wide. I'm, I'm just seeing a, just a lot of condensation of cloud part on the ground in several areas around this main rotation. And uh, again, I, I keep seeing debris clouds pop, and debris come off the ground and whip up into it, and it's really, really wrapping itself up. Okay, we're getting our storm velocity signature on the forewarn edge, very close to Laverty. Uh, David Payne's estimating 500 feet wide at the ground for a damaged swath. It is multiple vortex. It is on the ground right now, very close to Laverty. Jim Gardner, uh, can you uh, hear us in the chopper? Mike, I have you. We're, we're traveling south, southeast bound at this time, going around this on the south side, trying to a tremendous amount of inflow in this. Very large rotation, Mike, from our vantage point. This thing is just massive. Uh, I feel for David Payne there, because from our vantage point, from what we're seeing, Mike, this thing is huge. Uh, it's a very large tornado, uh, multiple vortices, uh, a lot of inflow. We're picking up a lot of turbulence now as we come around, or try to come around the south end of this thing. But uh, very large, Mike. People need to take cover now. I mean, this could develop into just very bad here any time now. Mike. Okay, we do recommend sirens uh, to be sounded in Chickasha. We also recommend people in Chickasha, Norge, and Laverty. You folks need to go to your safe spot now. This is a large multiple vortex 500. A foot wide tornado. It is on the ground right now. Do we still have David Payne? It's still rapid, rapid rotation. And what scares you, Mike, I've seen an hammer one of these, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and faster and faster and faster. And I'm afraid that at some point it's going to put down a really, really big tornado. I sure hope not, but it's, it's taking on that look like it's going to do something here very, very shortly like that. Steve Carano is on Highway 62 going east. He's caught in a hell core. He's in a very dangerous situation. I'm looking to my south and east towards David, and I cannot see the... Okay. Uh, Steve, you are in real danger where you're located. You need to uh, you need to probably get east out of the way because it looks like you are right in the projected path of this tornado. If you're between Chip Burden and Chickasha, yes. you are in the path of this tornado. Okay. How far south of uh, south Burden is it, Mike? I see it. It, it, I see it, it. is located. Uh, I see it, Mike. Yes, two to three miles south southeast of Verdon. Yes, it's coming right towards me. I'm going to get east on 62, and that way I can get a better vantage point. Okay, okay. Here, it is here's on the a, ground. Yes, go to go to our forewarn first video here pr briefly, and there's a close-up ground shot just came in via satellite from our forewarn ground units, and you can see the large debris cloud that gives you a better perspective, folks, of the intensity of this tornado. Perhaps from the ground you can get more of a feel for the large debris cloud that this tornado was kicking up. This was a dangerous situation because we were in a hell core with a ten small size hail, and we didn't know for sure exactly where the tornado was at a point until Mike said, hey, it's just to your south, and finally we look over our shoulder, and there the monster was. Well, we constantly look at exactly where you're at in reference to the tornado and try to keep you safe but amateurs don't have that vantage point, so they don't know exactly where the tornado is. That's why we watch out for you guys. That's why we encourage other people not to try to go out and storm chase.
for you folks in Chickasha, here's what we're dealing with. If this continues a straight path to the northeast, it'll graze the northwestern sides of Chickasha. If it turns ever so slightly to the right, there is the potential of this tornado coming into Chickasha. We need to just stress that because it is a possibility as it continues on the ground. And it is going to be very close for you folks in Chickasha of whether or not you have a tornado coming into your town or not. We want you to go to an interior closet or bathroom away from windows. Kids are at home. Think about a small closet or bathroom away from windows. And all you need to do is just turn up the volume on the television set and we will step you through this as it comes through. If you can get below ground, please do that now. Basement or storm cellar. If you don't have one of those, perhaps your next door neighbor does, you still have time to go to your next door neighbor's house and get into a storm cellar or basement. And we're watching this area rather closely over towards Piedmont and El Reno and the Union City, but right now the area concerned primarily, okay. we're talking about the Chickasha. Dan, area. you're Mike. talking about that area up north. That's a new severe thunderstorm warning now for Canadian County and Southern Kingfisher County until 6.30. Not a tornado warning, but a severe thunderstorm warning for larger than golf ball size hail and damaging winds. That's from El Reno to Okarchi over to Piedmont, moving toward the northeast toward Kingfisher County and eventually over to Logan County. We also have Steve Cronel, David Payne, both yes. on the line. Let's go to David here first. Okay, right now we're just in the south and west of Chickasha here over my shoulder. A large and violent tornado right now. More than likely an F3, F4 tornado winds probably in excess. or up around 200 miles per hour right now. It's done damage just to my west and to my north. And as you see over my shoulder now, a very, very large, very, very large tornado on the ground doing damage just to the south and west of Chickasha. Picture is hot, chopper. Picture is hot. Yeah. Yeah, I had to turn around because there's all kinds of damage. I took the power lines down, there's all kinds of damage from the road I was on, so I had to, I had to turn back around. I'm shoot that. I'm rolling. Rolling my window. Here it is. I'm good. I'm hey, good. Mike. Chopper, you a fool. Show us chicken shake just a little bit. Right there, that's chicken shake. Thank you. We went across the road just north of Laverty there, and it did quite a bit of damage. Numerous power lines down. We was, the plane was just about a half of a mile or an eighth of a mile north of you went across the road and uh, we had to turn around because of all the debris and the power lines and the uh, structure damage yeah. yeah. across the road. The plane still continues on the ground in my northeast about uh, okay, hurry. Let's go. a mile and a half. It's, it's a too. large, still a very, very large tornado. There's Chickasha. Let's pan back out again. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Let's go back over to the tornado. Okay, now you have, looks like you have two. Do you have two independent tornadoes on the ground there? It looks like you got two of them. Yeah, it looks like I got two of them, Mike. Uh, but like I said, they, they come together here. In fact, you can see them right now. Right now, They're the whole rotation, merge. they're beginning to wrap up into one, Mike. They're trying to merge. We still have Steve Carano and David Payne on the phone? Yes. Okay, Steve, yes. what is your exact location, and what do you see, and what direction are you what looking at? I am uh, looking to the west of uh, the, the town of Chickasha, two independent tornadoes, multi-vortex, over here by the industrial park side, over here yeah. by Lion Creek, Mike. Everyone that knows where Lion Creek is, the tornado is just to my west and southwest, about a mile, maybe two miles the most. Multi vortex tornado on the ground. Huge. Okay, Steve. Hey, hey yeah. Mike. We want to we want to keep both of you on the line. Both of you stay with us. The good news is the tornado right now is shrinking. It, it, it's cycling again. I've seen it do it. I've seen it do this twice now in the last 30 minutes, where it gets real small, and then of course the classic tornado storm like this to push out another big tornado. But as of right David, now, wow. David, is it wow. still on the ground? But Mike, yes, it is. The actual condensation part now has fallen apart, but there's still plenty of debris yeah. on the ground. There's all kinds of debris on the ground, but, but the actual condensate of the half mile wide uh, cloud we saw just a few okay. just a few seconds ago okay. is not there anymore. Okay. But, uh, David, but again, still David, on the ground. David, what is your exact location right, right now? Mike, I'm on the southwest side. I'm, on, I'm coming on the south. I can't. I don't know the street. I'm on oh, the southwest no. side of Chickasha. Right. Okay. David, stay right there. Stay right there. And we want to know, minute by minute, mile by mile, what this thing is doing as it comes into Chickasha. Okay, I can, I can hear the sirens going off now in Chickasha. Mike, right, here we go. We have condensation on the ground again. Okay. On the ground. On the ground. Uh, Jim Gardner, can you uh, can you pan out and show us Chickasha again, and let's go back over to the tornado because okay. it's now coming into town. Okay. Go ahead. On the right, ground. right now, I'm on the southwest corner of the of the city of Chickasha. That appears to be on the northwest side. I have a visual on the airport, Mike. 
It appears to be tracking. It's going to track right over the top of the Chickasha Airport, Mike, right over the top of it. Okay, now you're talking about the Chickasha Municipal Airport on the northwestern side of town. That's correct. It appears it's going to track right over the top of it, Mike. Okay, and you, from, your, from your vantage point, does it look like it's on the ground to you right now? Yes, there's a large condensation cloud. It's very okay. large, Mike, very large. Okay, cross-confirmation here, Highway 81 and Highway 62. You folks in Chickasha, that junction, as you know, is on the northwestern side of town one quarter to one half mile west of that location that's the exact location of the tornado which would put it in the chickasha municipal airport okay, we're those of you that here. live on the it's south and video. southeastern sides of that toward the northwestern side of chickasha that's where it's going to be tracking so it's going to spread mike. across the northwestern fringe of chickasha steve Prano, go ahead mike i am on highway 81 north of 62 on the west northwestern part of chickasha it is on the ground once again it is it is on the ground i'm about less than a mile away from it okay mike. Mike? Yes, go ahead, David. Okay, Mike, it's going back to another quarter to a half mile wide tornado as we just talked about. It's recycled. It's, it's rapidly going to a quarter to a half mile wide, half mile wide wedge here on the west northwest side of Chickasha. Okay. Yeah. It's and just Mike, that, I got it's... west winds again on the south side of the tornado about 80 miles an hour now, so there's going to be some damage south of the tornado. David Payne brings up a good point. And uh, we saw this on the June 13th tornadoes. Oh, on the yeah, south they're side they're of the tornado, you'll get some real strong damaging winds on the south side of the tornado that could easily be over 100 miles an hour. And the reason why we draw that point out is because Chickasha will be on the south side of this tornado as it tracks across the northwestern side of town. So even if the tornado misses the middle of Chickasha, you folks in Chickasha may have winds over 100 miles an hour on the south side. It'll be, it'll be a wind from the west so you folks need to stay hey, especially away from your west windows in the entire city of Chickasha as is now is tracking across 62 near the junction of Highway 81 near and just to the southeast of the Chickasha Municipal Airport. Hey, but, Mike, can I interrupt for a minute? Yes. Go ahead, Mike, Jim. We're going to run into a problem here. Highway 81 is packed with cars. I mean, not Highway 81, but the, tur the Bailey Turnpike. We're just looking at it. It's packed with cars coming southbound, Mike. I don't know where this is going to cross. If you can give a projection where this is going to cross, but we could have some serious damage here. Folks that are listening on the Bailey Turnpike to Magic 104.1 on your car radio, our recommendation from the Forewarned Storm Center is to turn around and go back northeast. It's just that simple. Pick pick a uh, pick a crossover. Be very safe as you turn around. Do not. Do not take any unnecessary risk, but we do not recommend traveling down the Bailey Turnpike. And here's the reason why. This tornado may cross over or even parallel the Bailey Turnpike potentially for a long hey, way. It's just to the north of the Bailey right now, and it could travel along the Bailey Turnpike. And you'll have some very large hail, some damaging hail, and there's a chance that uh, you could be in the path of the tornado on the Bailey Turnpike. It will be tracking very close to the Bailey Turnpike, then up the Bailey Turnpike into the southwest metro. Now, if I it were to stay on a straight line course if it'll stay on a straight line course we'll just draw a line from where it has been to where it is to where it could go just a straight line from where it's been to where it could go it'll be heading from amber yeah, on up to uh, just southeast of tuttle up the bailey turnpike and then up to north newcastle perhaps south mustang into west moore and southwest oklahoma city also mike just confirmed uh, tornado reported 626 just south of amber that was moving to the northeast Right now, we're just about an eighth of a mile east of Amber and over my shoulder now, the tornado coming to the ground again. And what you're looking at there is a violent, violent, rapidly rotating tornado, estimated width there about uh, an eighth to uh, maybe a quarter of a mile wide. And again, winds in there approaching 200 miles an hour. Where we are, we have winds flowing into the tornado right now at about the 70 to 80 miles an hour. But again, now here it is. It's getting bigger over my shoulder. We're going to a quarter to a half mile wide tornado now on the ground south and east of Amber here, uh, about, an, about a mile and a half, a very, very large maxi tornado on the ground. Well, at this point, we keep chasing north and east. We pass through the city of Amber and looking south here, the tornado now getting better and better organized. And from here, when it goes on the ground from this point on, this no, is where it no, takes its here, deadly here. course right towards the metro. Oh, my gosh. Roll, roll. Roll, there's good. Roll, this is not good. Roll. Folks, you need to know that this is a large tornado, potentially up to one mile in diameter, and it has produced very significant damage in Chickasha. It is now headed into the Southwest Metro. We cannot express to you enough 
how important it is right now that you think about where you need to go to be very safe to protect your life, your families, and your loved ones' lives as this moves into southwest Oklahoma City. This is absolutely the potential worst-case scenario developing for Oklahoma City. The population density really begins to pick up now as we start talking about the metro here on the southeastern sides of Tuttle. Now, now from the Bailey Turnpike up to downtown Tuttle, in this area, the population begins to increase, and you folks are going to have the tornado tracking toward your area in the next five minutes. Live with Chopper 4 and Steve Carano on the phone. Go ahead. Uh, Mike, the tornado. tornado. The Mark, Mike, can you hear me? Mike, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, Steve. The tornado just oh, took my. out our back windshield. The tornado uh, just took out our back windshield. It shattered it. It passed in front of us about well, four, less than a quarter of a mile. Uh, I am. Uh, the tornado is still on the ground. Probably, oh wow, probably, uh, probably east northeast of Amber, about maybe three or four miles. Three or four miles. It just took out the back windshield of our vehicle. Okay, this this is a very large tornado. It continues right. on the ground. David Payne, go ahead. Yeah, Mike, I'm about to. I'm five miles. I'm actually four and a half miles east of Amber. The tornado went to the southeast of Amber. There's numerous homes gone. They're gone. There's nothing left of the homes. The tornado passed about. 200 yards to me. I had winds to probably 120 miles an hour in my vehicle. Power lines down, all kinds of power lines down. Major, major, major damage to the east of Amber. And unbelievably, there's a truck coming at me when this is going on, and he missed the tornado by literally feet. He's lucky to be alive. But again, all kinds of damage here. There's homes that are completely off the foundation. There's nothing left. Let, let, let's clarify that. You're saying that there are homes that have been swept off their foundation and they're gone. Is that what you're trying to say? I, I saw I saw two homes that took major damage, and one was literally uh -huh. gone. Gone. There was nothing left. And there's, 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 I'm seeing big, big 100-year-old trees that are sheared off at the base, or they're gone. And I I drove to the damage path, I caught it, it's a half mile wide tornado, five miles north and east of Amber, it's big, and it's got winds in excess of 200 miles an yes, hour, it, maybe yes, it does. and I mean, it means business. Yes, it does. I think it's fair to say that we have at least an F4 category tornado now coming no into the southwest. No doubt about it. You know, we've seen them for years, no doubt about it. Seen it over and over, time and time again, an F4, and uh, this may actually go, I'm not going to say an F5 because the damage is hitting, but... Uh, I'll give it an F4 right now. It's, it's just absolutely incredible. It's been multiple vortex, and right now it's a half mile wide, getting larger as I'm talking to you. Okay, David and Steve Carano both stay with us. Uh, track it if you can stay safe. Let's go to Jim Gardner. Jim, can you see the Bailey Turnpike in reference to that tornado? The Bailey Turnpike is right at the bottom of your screen there, Mike. If you lower your L right behind the... the right there, right there it is. And the tornado is just north there of it. It is, it is. It is tracking Bailey. north, northeast. Oh, wow. It appears to get a little closer. Mike, this thing is just absolutely huge, but we're kind of we're kind of concerned. We're watching right next to us, Mike. I mean, just literally a couple hundred feet from us. We got another rotation right next to us, and so we may have to widen out here. But you're, I hope people can see. I don't know if they can see what we're seeing. If the picture's really clear, but this is just phenomenal, Mike. Mike Duncan, let's see if we can get him on the Gintner. Mike, this is Mike. Yes, go ahead, Mike. This storm is almost a mile wide. It is about a mile on the west side of H.E. Bailey right now. It seems to be following the path of the interstate pretty closely. It hasn't gotten much closer to the interstate since we started following it. There are people on the sides of the roads here under the underpasses getting protection. There are emergency vehicles on the highway out here facing the storm in case of any damage. We haven't seen anything get hit here, but I imagine there are, are tons of stuff in the path of this storm and inside the actual funnel, which at this point is more than half a mile wide. We are tracking you, Mike, and with Chopper 4 Live, stay on the phone with us. It looks like it will be paralleling the Bailey Turnpike. There's a chance it may raise the Bailey Turnpike to the east of Amber. Right now it is exactly paralleling the Bailey Turnpike. So if you live near the Bailey and north of the Bailey in northeastern Brady County up toward uh, Newcastle and southeastern sides of Tuttle, uh, you folks need to, you need to absolutely go to the safest place where you know. And if you can get below ground, get below ground. If, you're, if your relative or your friend next door has a storm cellar, take the time now. Turn your radio on KMGL, take it with you, and get below ground.
We're tracking this monster tornado as it makes its way towards the metro area, but there are other thunderstorms that are strengthening in other parts of the state. Dan, as this particular tornado continues to strengthen, we knew the only safe place to be was below ground level. It was near the town of Bridge Creek that the Doppler on Wheels, a portable Doppler radar, measured an incredible wind speed, 318 miles per hour, establishing a new world record. As the tornado tracked over Bridge Creek, the wind speeds over 300 miles per hour, our storm tracker Mike Duncan captured incredible video just north of I-44. Take a look. There is a rain of debris coming down. Insulation, wood, wood uh, the, the interstate is littered all over the place with debris from this tornado. It is sweeping by us at high rates of speed. Tornado is still on the west side of H.E. Bailey, about a quarter mile from the highway. It's moving to the north north east but uh it's getting very dark where we are and and there is hundreds of pieces of, of junk floating through the air going by in a circular motion orbiting this, this huge tornado and obviously some houses have been hit we've seen paint insulation flying through the air wood parts parts of roof there is probably a 20 foot long piece of roof flying 150 feet above the road right now it's across the road it is amazing right now mike folks if you live on the southwest sides of oklahoma county uh you might want to get yourself ready because this is a massive storm that is on the ground it's produced multiple tornadoes our storm trackers are on it chopper four has been on it mike has been telling you about it very dangerous situation that's moving towards the south and southwest sides of oklahoma city you may lose power you may be uh, able not to follow us so you do want to get a battery operated uh, a radio or television if you have a battery operated uh, radio 104.1 will carry our signal we'll be able to walk you into this thing as the storm slowly moves into the southwest side of and, and it is now entering a very densely populated area uh, of Newcastle, and it is right on the Bailey Turnpike right now, two miles to the west of the McLean Brady County line. So it's about to move into what is moving into the western side of Newcastle right now. The folks in Tuttle proper are in the clear, but Westmore, Central Moore, South Moore, Newcastle, and far north Norman are in immediate danger of this tornado that continues to be on the ground. Steve Ferrano, go ahead. Mike, it is on the ground uh, still, and I am uh, at the highway of uh, end is 130 and 62. So it looks like it's going to be north and west of Newcastle, uh, probably going through uh, Highway 62 here. Uh, the the streetlights are out, Highway 62, and it is uh, going to be north, uh, right along the, 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 the turnpike, Mike, uh, north of uh, downtown Newcastle. Okay, Steve Carano, what's your exact location right now and exactly where is the tornado? Highway 62, uh, it's going to cross Highway 62 on the northwest side of Newcastle. The west, uh, northwest side of Newcastle. The northern extent of Newcastle, you folks uh, need to take cover. Uh, all of Highway 62 here, all the power is pretty much gone. It's off. And David Payne now joins us. David, what do you see? Uh, my, uh, Dan, I got, I'm about uh, two miles north of Newcastle. The power just went off in Newcastle. And again, the tornado is just north of town here. An F2, uh, I'm sorry, let me back up. An F3, F4, quarter to a half mile wide tornado. Unbelievable. Just northeast of town here. Uh, major tornado doing major damage. It took out several structures, demolished several structures. I saw roofs. I saw roofs. I saw telephone poles. I've seen everything in the air as it just crossed about a quarter of a mile north of me. And uh, again, still, still on the ground, still violently, violently rotating. Uh, F4, F5. Again, people don't need to look at these pictures. They need to take cover immediately. This storm is huge. This tornado is big, big. And again, we're up on it right now. It's to the northeast of Newcastle, about to, uh, oh, we're about three miles. The tornado's located right here. That's at 44, just to the southwest of Highway 37, Westmore. It is now beginning to turn more to the left, and that will take it up to as far north as South 89th Street. Even you folks that are a mile north of South 89th Street, you folks need to seek shelter immediately, interior closet or bathroom. We're talking about South Oklahoma City, near South 89th Street, because the tornado now is turning more to the left. Let's go back now live to Steve Carano. Steve, what's it look like? Okay, Mike, I've got Skyline Clippers heading back towards you right now. Multiple vortex tornado still on the ground. It's north and east of, uh, of Newcastle. It's east of Highway 62, and you folks in western side of the Moore, I guess, what is that, Highway 37, Mike? I I'm not in close to the map. Is that Highway 37? Debris, uh, debris everywhere, several multi-vortex tornadoes rotating around that. You folks in Moore, please take cover. This is a huge storm, and it's still moving east, northeast, and, Mike, it looks like, it, like you were saying earlier, it's trying to turn left. 
it's anchoring right now. It's staying put. It's hanging tight. It's still moving east northeast at a uh, very slow clip. Uh, you folks in more, please take cover. This thing is moving towards you right now. And here it is. Back up, back up, back up. Backing up, we're backing up. Hello? Back up, back get up. Get me on there, get me on there. Back up. Get me on there, I'm having to back out of it. I'm too close, I'm too close. Hello? Stop. Okay, Mike, I'm on a southwest 149 just north of the river and an F3 F4 tornado. I just had to back out. I was too close. I uh, have to admit, I had to back out a little bit. Got a little scared there for a second. Again, uh, uh, it's crossing It's crossing southwest 149 right now. Oh, my gosh. we got. Uh, I've got a huge roof in the air. I've got a home roof in the air. I've got winds now to 100. In my position, to 110 miles an hour. The, the tornado is directly over southwest 100. And 49, and it's a half mile wide, and it's an F4 tornado, and winds in excess of 200, maybe 240 miles an hour. Okay. If you can hear the wind, I'll roll the window down, and you can hear the wind here. You can hear the, the rushing water sound, the, 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 the roar, if you would. It just crossed southwest, 149, just east of, of 44, and, it, and it, it's, uh, it, I think what it did, it turned hard right at the river, and, now it's, and then it took more of a north, uh, a more of a north turn. It turned more back to the left, it anchored and came back to the left as it intensified, which of course is a classic thing that happens with these. So it came a little bit further north, and I, I am in the middle of all kinds of, of damage here. I've got a building that was... Uh, as I'm talking to you, there's, uh, there's several homes here that were hit extremely, extremely hard. I have animals, power lines down, uh, animals down. Uh, I have a mess. And, uh, of course, as you can imagine, we need emergency crews here on Southwest 49th to see uh, 44. And, uh, oh, my gosh, looking around, Mike, it looks literally like a war zone. I mean, every house, cars, um, it's, it's really bad. I can just describe it as a war zone. Uh, there's, there's debris everywhere. There's parts of houses that are okay. missing. Uh, major large trees are snapped off of the base, sheared off of the base, and again, the corner now just to my north and east. This is live now at May Avenue, just to the north of Highway 37, uh, in the western sides of Moore. And if we have any of our ground-based uh, units, we'll take them. Jim Gardner live. Uh, Go ahead, Jim. Large transformer explosions right now. A lot of explosions going off in the middle of this tornado. So significant damage being done as this tornado tracks. We're getting a lot of turbulence here, Mike. We're right on the edge of The winds are just incredible when we went into Westheimer. We were still several miles away from this thing, but the winds are just absolutely incredible. Okay, this will be tracking across I-35 uh, just to the north of Highway 37 at around Southwest uh, 104th Street. If you live around Southwest 104th and I-35, back down to May Avenue and Highway 37, it is right there tracking towards Southwest 104th or South 104th and I-35. Jim, let's stay with your chopper shot. It is uh, moving in now to the heart of uh, Northwestern uh, Moore. Go ahead. Roger, Mike. We can see cars on the, on the, on the roads, uh, on the streets up in front of us, Mike. I don't know if you can tell that from you, but, uh, I mean, these people need to get off this road. I mean, it's just, it, I don't know what to say, Mike. The pictures tell it all. It's just... This is just a massive tornado. Tornado. It's creating a lot of damage. Anybody caught in this thing is going to be injured. They need to get off now after listening to the radio and uh, find a safe place. They got emergency crews running everywhere down the road here, Mike. We're coming up uh, just north uh, west of Westheimer here, about uh, four miles, tracking east northeast bound with this tornado. Uh, you just see the explosions going off in the center of this thing, Mike. Uh, but the main concern is the people on the ground on these roads. They need to find shelter. Back to you. Okay, uh, let's go to our ground shot at South 89th and I-35. Now you can see it. There it is. Uh, this, we're going to stay with this one for a while as well and just go back and forth between the chopper and the ground shot. There is the tornado on the ground. You're at South 89th Street and I-35. That's just to the south of Crossroads Mall. You're looking toward the south-southwest from Crossroads Mall. Large explosion. And there's... Large explosion. Large explosion. Tremendous, folks. We have to just express Large to you, this explosion. is 200 mile per hour winds plus 
now moving toward I-35 in Moore. Mike, there you can see it on the ground. That's Very dangerous excited. situation. Our worst fears really are realized. Yes. A major tornado on the ground in a major metropolitan area. Dangerous situation, not since June 13th. You can hear it. See. You, you can, can hear, hear it from South 89th Street. Uh, let's, be, well, let's be quiet for a second. We'll see if we can hear that sound. You can hear the roar. You can hear the tornado from 89th Street. You can hear the roar. Again, those listening on radio, you are going to be occasionally experiencing some uh, power outages because uh, these storms are moving into the metro area. We're going to have Let's occasionally with that some shot. Look at the debris. Powers. Look at all the debris. Look at all the debris in the air. Folks, please, we plead with you. You absolutely have got to get down. Get, get to the lowest level you possibly can. We plead with you. Do not take the extra minute or two. We plead with you to get below ground. Get in the interior closet or bathroom. Get in the bathtub. We plead with you. There it is crossing Interstate 35. There is a tremendous amount of debris in the air. We pray and plead with you, please get down now. If you're I-35, get out of your car. If you're east of I-35 over to Taker Air Force Base, please, we plead with you, go to your safe spot now. Take your radio. Forget the live pictures. Go get safe. Oh, my gosh. 89. I, folks, we plead with you, just go, go to your safe spot if you possibly can. That, that, that's an F, look at the, look at the horizontal vortex. That is an F4 to an F5 tornado. That's Mike. winds of 250 miles an hour. All right, we're asking our crew right now to shut down, get out, and get out of there. This is a dangerous situation. Mike, uh, a serious situation, and many folks still will be tempted to go outside and try to look at this thing. Mike, or do you, not go outside. You stay you stay where it. you're at. If you're in your car in this area, you need to get out of your car right now. You're going to be experiencing some power outages. We're broadcasting, simulcasting right now on AM 1520 KOMA and also on Magic 104.1 FM and KRXO. also on KRXO. So FM 107.7 or 104.1 or also KOMA 1520. This is the uh, largest storm we have seen in the metro area. This we, is... We, oh my gosh. Uh, this will go south of our live camera. This will go south of our live camera. Okay. I think they can probably stay up and be safe. It's going to go to their south and to their east. Folks, if you live along South 89th Street and it's in North Moore right now, if you live on South 89th Street over to Lake Stanley Draper and Tinker Air Force Base. Folks, it's headed your way, and it could easily be an F-5 tornado. We plead with you, do not take this lightly. The, no, the GM plant is no, not safe. No, GM, GM plant is the direct path if, you of this. The, if you're working out in the General Motors plant, take the immediate tornado precautions. Evacuate, evacuate the plant right now. Go to your designated tornado safety area at the GM plant right now. Do not Tinker yeah. Air Force Base as well. Tinker and GM both are in the direct Tinker path. Tinker has been evacuated. Tinker Mike, has been evacuated. we have Tammy Payne at Tinker Air Force Base. Let's go ahead and take uh, that call right now. Tammy Payne, can you hear us? Tammy Payne, you're live on the air. Okay, we, okay. we, we so, do so not have... Call back. Mike, Tinker and both General Motors both have a plan of action. They do know what to do in case oh, a tornado warning is issued. Those are the things that we practice for. Do those things now. Those kids that are listening to us and uh, watching us, we do have drills. We do go to your schools. We tell you the safe things to do. Do those things right now. Storm sirens, you may or may not hear them, but this is a very dangerous situation for South Oklahoma City. Folks that live in the Kingfisher area, we continue with a tornado warning there, Mike. We'll continue to watch that, but this tornado and, right now is on the ground. And it is, and it, folks, it is also still turning left. It is turning left, and that's going to take it deeper into Oklahoma County, east of I-35. It looks, it looks to be, Tinker Air Force Base it looks to be in the direct bullseye path of this tornado. Even Southdale City and even Central and South Midwest City, even as far north as uh, Southeast 29th Street, over around Midwest and Air Depot. If you live near that area or south of there, you stand the risk of having a direct hit from this tornado. It is headed directly toward Tinker Air Force Base. Houses leveled in more. Do we still have our we still have our South 89th Street live shot? Let's go to it. Okay, there you can see what we've been talking about. Those of you listening, we're looking at live pictures from the Moore area. Very hey, dangerous Dan, situation. If you can hear me. We can hear the crew live. Go ahead. This is uh, Dan Anderson. I'm uh, just one mile north on 35 access road this thing passed right in front of us about a mile away it is huge 
I've seen several explosions from power lines. We have uh, crews coming down. We're starting to get hammered by rain now. But th you're looking at the back side of it as it went past I-35. It, it looked like it went directly over the Moore Water Tower. Yes. Yes, we have you, Dan Anderson, directly over the Moore Water Tower, and you're looking at the back side. You're looking southeast from South 89th Street and I-35. It is now traveling through Northeast Moore, approaching uh, Sunny Lane, Sooner, and Air Depot Roads. It's near Bryant and Southwest 89th, Southeast 89th and 104th Street in Bryant. Right now is the location. Can we go back to Jim Gart? Oh, Tammy Payne is also live on the phone. Tammy, it is moving directly toward your location. Mike, it's obvious it is. The skies have gotten considerably darker in a short amount of time, and folks here in Midwest City who are driving are taking the dark skies, heavy rain, and poor Quarter size hail very seriously. We have a number of family members, children, and parents, women who have who've gotten out of their cars and are taking cover under a bridge, under blankets. More than a dozen cars in the, under the bridge where we are stationed. And we're going to stay here and tell you if anything changes here in Midwest City. I tell you, the folks who are home, count your lucky stars. Some of these people who waited too long to get home are paying for it to a certain extent, having to take cover under bridges, hoping for the best. And, it appears things are heading our way. Yeah, Tammy, please stay with us and also take a look uh, to where you are and uh, be prepared to seek shelter. Jim Gardner live. Mike, Jim, Jim, go ahead. Uh, Tinker, we're, we're in view of Tinker Air Force Base at this time. I've counted six lightning strikes directly to the Tinker Air Force Base in front of this in front of this tornado. I mean, Tinker's just getting pelted with lightning strikes. It's unbelievable. Uh, the boar is totally without power. I mean, it's black, Mike. There's I mean, there's just a few scattered lights on. Moore is totally without power. But right now, the main concern is Tinker Air Force Base. This thing is tracking right for it, Mike. South 89th and Sunny Line, almost on 240. Tornado, large tornado on the ground right now. David Payne joins us. David, can you see the storm? Yes, it's on, it's on 240. It's on just, I'm a mile east of Sunny Lane. It's on 240 in Sunny Lane. I've got major, 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 major damage here on 240. Uh, eastbound here, I just passed Sunny Lane. I've got west winds again at about 80 miles an hour, and I've, it looks like snow. It looks like snow. I've got so much debris. I've got so much. I've got debris all over my car. There's debris hanging on the on the power lines that are left. Uh, there's just pieces of home scattered all through and on on I-240. It looks like it's a desert. What I mean is there's nobody here but my car going eastbound. Uh, there's billboard signs, big metal billboard signs, uh, blown over. And it literally looks like looks like an atomic bomb went off here. Just east though on I-240 at Sunny Land, the tornado now is just to my east, and just to my just to my northeast, about uh, about oh, an eighth of a mile or less. The rapid rotation here and again. Um, trees, large large trees are sheared off at the base, and I'm having I'm having okay. Yeah, David, fine. David, it is now just it's one mile okay, southwest. I'm going to pull out of here. We've got uh, we've got all kinds of gas lines now leaking. I smell gas feeling all over uh, east of Sunny Lane here on 240. And that brings up a good point, David. Folks that are going down there, if, if you are not in the affected area, we plead with you, do not go down there. Gas lines have been ruptured. There is a potential for to be injured by flying debris that is still falling from the sky. Emergency crews have to have the roadways clear to rescue folks that have been trapped in this and more. So the tornado tracking has gone on for several hours now when we pull into Dell City. The tornado has just ripped through here about 30 seconds before. Anyone badly hurt? All right, just stay there. Yeah, don't move because of these power lines. Yeah. We look around, there's nothing left. There's no homes, no trees, cars were mangled. And by looking at all the cars, we knew there was people home. And more than likely, people were hurt and even killed. At that point, that's when we honestly knew the chase was over, that we had to get out and help as many people as we possibly could.
Dan, often in tornado situations, you have a family of tornadoes, and after the Dell City tornado began to lift, more tornadoes formed west of Oklahoma City. And we sent our Steve Carano on that storm that worked its way through the Piedmont area. At that time, it was an F2, eventually made its way back into Logan County. That storm weakened just a little bit, but continued to move to the north. And that tornado grew to over one mile wide as it tracked through a large part of Logan County, eventually leveling the town of Mulhall. Steve Carano was tracking that storm as it made its way to the northeast, eventually intensified to an F4 and hit Mulhall. During the past hour, you have seen Oklahoma's largest tornado outbreak in action from our forewarned storm trackers and have seen the incredible amount of damage those tornadoes left behind. By purchasing this videotape, your money is going to go to the tornado victims through the forewarned storm recovery fund. We hope we never see another day like May 3rd, 1999, but we'll always be ready here in the forewarned storm center with the latest warning and the most up-to-date coverage that you're going to find anywhere else. It's all to keep Oklahomans safe. It's our commitment to you, and we will always keep you forewarned. Thanks for what Channel 4 is doing. Your coverage is excellent and very, very informative. And we need it because for many of us, that's the best information we've got.